So I was minding my own business, trying out this npm install thing. And if you don't know what that is, well, you got to do that when you want to run stuff with JavaScript these days. npm install is great though. It takes all the lovely dependencies in package.json and squirts them right into your project's node modules directory, ready for you to run whatever amazing JavaScript applications yes. you want to run. It was all going so well when this weird package.lock.json file appeared. I didn't ask for it, it just kind of turned up uninvited. Turns out that npm adds this file automatically to represent the versions of all the packages installed in node modules. But what was packagelock.json used for? I scoured the internet for an answer in every dark corner and crevice, but every explanation I found left me with more questions. Eventually I figured it out, and I'm telling you right now what it does, okay? But first you've got to understand something. You know when you run npm install for a specific package, which is actually quite different from the other type of npm install because this one adds a dependency to your package.json file? Well, when npm does that, did you ever notice that little hat character before the version string? It's called carrot. Okay, well that little carrot is special, and it actually means this version or any more recent minor version, whichever is more up to date. The clever npm people invented this as a way to keep packages updated automatically without much effort from developers. And that's all great, assuming that every developer that ever published a package follows semantic versioning to the letter. <laughs> anyway, the carrot version, as we'll call it, goes a bit wonky when you consider all the updates packages get. If I run npm install today, I might get one set of package versions, but tomorrow I might get another set, depending on what new versions were published. So to make things a bit more deterministic, npm added packagelock.json. It's an index of all the packages that have been added to node modules. Anytime npm updates your node modules directory, it updates packagelock.json at the same time. And the really cool thing is that when you commit this file into version control, you're sharing the exact package versions with anyone or anything running npm. So if I clone a project which contains a package.json and a package.lock.json, what does npm actually do? When I run npm install, it installs packages from package.json, but it won't install a more recent version than what's listed in package.lock.json. This way, when you run npm install, and when Bob runs npm install, you're both installing the same package versions. Fantastic, great work. Next npm video, please. Hold on, not quite. Because if on one hand we have a package.json with a special carrot to represent the latest minor version, then what's the point of on the other hand locking the version? That got me crawling the internet, looking in cracks that never got looked in before, but eventually I found the answer. Whilst npm install respects what's in packagelock.json, there's another command, npm update, that doesn't. It looks at package.json and installs into node modules the latest minor versions where you've used carrot, and even patch versions where you've used the squiggly tilde thing. And it updates packagelock.json at the same time. Fantastic! If this all sounds a bit complicated, well it is, so let me summarise it in three points sized perfectly for developer digestion. Oh, and don't ever use a hat where you should use a carrot. See you in the next one.